Hello everyone. I hope you are doing great. Well, so today we are going to learn about uh, forking in GitHub. This is something you know you got to know if you are supposed to contribute to any of the open source project or any of the public project or you want to kind of uh, take some of the public project and want to change something, enhance something, I think forking is the right way to go. So today we are going to discuss about like what is forking, how to do GitHub forking and of course uh, you know please watch the last bit of it where we will be able to show you certain examples of how to get it done you know live. And uh, please don't miss the task that I have kept for you at the end. Okay, so without any further delay, let's get into the business. This particular session expect you to know a bit about GitHub. So you should be a beginner to GitHub and already started using it. Uh, if you are very, very new to GitHub, very new to Git and you kind of don't understand much of it yet, don't worry about it. I have created a video that is demystifying Git for beginners. Go and give it a watch. I'm sure that you will be learning and you'll be loving Git a lot, right? After that, come here and start watching this fork video. I think then it will make much more sense for you, right? Because we'll be talking in terms of GitHub stuff, in terms of certain terminologies of Git, that it should make sense to you when I'm actually talking about it, okay? When you visit a public Git repository, you get to see this option fork over here. You have to click on this to start forking the repository. But before we do that, let's understand what exactly forking is and why should we even use that. A picture worth a thousand words, isn't it? What would be best and than you know understanding like a story? So let's take two characters. One is Tom, another is Harry. They both have uh, you know, uh, their GitHub accounts and what exactly Tom doing? Tom has a repository which is having certain files and Tom manages his project. Now Harry if I figure it out like hey this is a cool project that Tom is having why don't I just take this particular project and start contributing to it. Now what Tom can uh, actually uh, do is like Tom can make this particular project public so that everybody can start contributing to it but there are few catches like Harry is able to see this project as a public but still if he wants to contribute to it contribution means changing a code doing a pull request and all those kind of things if he is able to do he needs to be somehow part of this project so one way Harry can go back to Tom and say hey Tom I want to be a contributor to the project can you please give me access to this can you please um, you know add me as a contributor and I can start contributing to this now Tom may be a busy person and whenever he is doing or not doing all these things all this kind of uncertainty is coming to the picture instead of going by that route what Hari can do Hari can simply fork this particular repo so what exactly forking mean here whenever that forking button is clicked this particular repository every file and folder of this particular repository from Tom's repository come to Hari's repository so in this case the Tom's repository is called an upstream repo and Hari's repository is called a forked repo okay these are the terminologies that people use it may be important for interview as well so if that repository name was repo in case of Tom's repository it used to be slash Tom github user id slash the repo name after forking it will be slash Hari slash repo forked from slash Tom slash repo this is the exact copy of whatever over here right now advantage is once this copy is available to Hari, Hari can do everything possible with this project. He can contribute to the project over here, he can change things, he can extend it, he may not even you know contribute ever. He just kind of don't want to reinvent the wheel that's something that Tom has already done, he wants to do something on top of that and then make his own project. Fine, he can actually do that. Now whatever his workflow is going to be after he gets this project in his repository now he can clone this project to his local file i mean the local desktop or you know his pc or wherever it is after cloning he can make all the changes they can then he can actually push his changes to this particular fork repo and if he wants to contribute that change back to tom's repo again the upstream he has to raise a pull request to this that's the workflow now you can place yourself in place of hurry right like you might have some you know repository that you see very good like you want to kind of um, contribute to say you know react.js repo or angular repo or, or any other open source repo so what exactly you're going to do you are going to fork that repo after forking that repo you clone it to your local disk 
After that, you can probably create a branch out of it, make your changes, push it to your, make sure that things are pushed to your, you know, your repository. After that, if you want that change to go to the main upstream, you know, the actual React repository, actual Angular repository, you raise a full request from here to your upstream repo. And the maintainer of the upstream repo, Tom, they will decide whether your pull request should be accepted or not. If they feel that, you know, it is a great work and you can, they can accept it, they will accept it. Otherwise, they'll come back to you with a lot of reasons and reasoning that you have to possibly provide. That's all about forking, my friend. So if you want to contribute to any of the public project, start forking now. Now, in the next one, we'll be learning is like how to fork. And then I'll give you one task that we have to perform. All right. So let's see that. Here I have a repo uh, called Fork Me, and I have created this repo, you know, under my uh, uh, account. Uh, so this is a, it's a fresh repository; it doesn't have much other than this readme.md and few other files. But we should be able to simulate like what exactly Fork means and whatever you learn from the diagram over here. Now uh, this is another user that I'm going to bring in right now in my screen. So this is another user like Green Roots. Um, you can see. So what Green Roots can do basically, Green Roots actually can go to now a tapas repository and can start forking. Here the user Green Roots who logged in went to a tapas fork me repository and click on this particular fork button. The moment he click on this fork button, what will happen is the forking will start. You see this the forking has started. But after forking, see what happened. This particular repo now appeared under Green Roots and it clearly says there is fork from a tapas fork me. That means whatever was there in the A tapas fork me repo is got an exactly copy. This repository has got created and everything is there and it is residing now in green roots. So it means this fork me repo now can be cloned, can be checked out, can be walked upon and do what not. Everything possible that we will be able to do over here. So let's do that one step by step. So first thing that green roots is going to do is going to copy the URL so it's going to copy the URL so that it can clone it to its local uh, does it's kind of look you know and then start doing the work let's pretend that uh, green root is going to use command prompt uh, basically git bash in this case to clone the repo so you'll be using the git clone command this is the basic command to clone the repository so the repository will be cloned you know in momentarily as we see the cloning is done so what we can do is like we can actually browse to this repository called fork me and uh, after going inside this repository what we can do we can start doing certain modifications so we'll first see like you know what are the things available inside this repository so you see that the entire things has come like you know all these particular files let us now create a uh, folder uh, with this particular user us usernames. Say this is green roots, right? So we'll be creating a folder called make directory green hyper roots. That's the folder name. So after the folder gets created, what we are going to do is create some file inside that. Now we'll first browse to this particular folder called green roots. Now let's create. Oops, let's create a file say touch um, readme.md right some md file for example so as you see under fork me there is green roots and then we have this readme file let's open up this readme file and do some modification so i opened this file in a uh, editor called markdown monstra you can open it as a notepad or notepad plus plus also and just type in some markdown commands basically so we'll say forked is the heading and then we say yeah fork okay so some some text basically i save it and i see like you know how exactly it's getting uh, rendered for a markdown format so next thing that we're going to do we are going to commit this file and I'm going to push this file so what we're going to do we are going to uh, push this so let's see git status like what we have to add first add this folder so we'll do git add green root so that we can stage it so green roots will be staged and after staging we are going to do a commit and then we are going to do a push so first we are doing the add okay ignore that warning for now now let's do a git commit with a message and the message say forked and committed you know but in real life, you'll be giving some more making sense message, I guess. 
All right. So the final thing that you're going to do after this commit is done is pushing. Now let's do git push origin main. This is gonna push it to the repository. So that's pretty much it. Now we'll be going to GitHub and try to see what exactly happened over there. So let's move to GitHub and start seeing the thing over there. Please notice the thing. So here we see like, you know, there is a folder called green roots. This is the one we pushed and inside green roots, uh, there will be a readme.md file. And this is the text that we have added. So great. So we have clone, we are actually forked this one, uh, from a tapas after that we have cloned, we have made our changes and pushed it to this fork me, but these changes are not yet into a tapas fork me, right? So what we'll be doing now, we'll be pushing this particular thing to a tapas, but with the help of a pull request. So let's go to pull request tab and then do a new pull request. And I want you to pay, pay some attention over here. What we are saying now from the green roots fork me with me from main branch, I want to you know get some code, my changes to a tapas fork me's main branch. Now, had we created a branch you know, locally, we would have selected that branch, but we have only one branch main, so it's fine. From main to main, it will go. Right. And you can also see the changes that you have made and just do a create pull request. One thing did you notice right now when you're actually creating the pull request, you're creating a pull request in a tapas fork me. You are not creating a pull request in green roots for me. So this is the biggest change. This is the biggest difference. You have made the changes locally in your repository, but now you are going to the parent upstream repository and there you're creating the pull request. So let's go ahead and create this pull request. And while pull request is asking for, hey, I have added a folder named with my user ID. Yeah, indeed I did. And then what uh, is expecting is like, have you added a readme.md file? Yes. So this is how uh, that uh, fork me repository wants things to be kind of committed. I understand the uh, fork concept fully. Yes, I, I understand that. So I'll prove you with this. Okay, I'll check and then do a create pull request. Now, the moment I do this pull request creation, let me just go to, you know, if the fork me over here, and if you see, this is a tapas fork me, right? I was actually running that in another browser for you. So this is a tapas fork me. And if I just refresh this, let's see what happened. Uh, after I refresh this, I'll be able to see this fork has count has gone up one. So that means there is one fork somebody has done from this repository and we know like who has done this is green roots. We also see a pull request being raised. Now I'm playing the role of an Athapus, right? I'm not playing the role of green roots anymore. Oh, I see there is a pull request. Somebody is asking me to, you know, get this feature in. So what I can do straight away, I can go and review this pull request. If I am all good, I'll approve and I'll take it. So go ahead and click on this pull request. Let's see the changes. Athapus is seeing green roots changes right now hey uh, I can go to this files change tab now and what I see hey this is a great addition all right so let's go ahead and approve this particular and say like you know um, you know add green roots great change great change approve so we're giving some command and approving it so let's approve this thing and once the thing is approved, the next thing that I can do as a maintainer of this project is just merge these changes. Once I merge these changes, these changes are now part of my main upstream branch, upstream repository. So this is done. So if I go this one uh, over here, the fork me, now I'll be able to see a folder called green roots appearing here inside green roots i'm able to see green roots changes over here so this is the same thing you can perform when you do the open source projects so don't forget guys uh, fork is very very powerful option for you and you must do this okay so now the task the task i was talking about so if you're watching this video uh, if you want to kind of try out the things so what you can do is like go to ethapus slash fork me you have this particular repository link in the description of this video just fork this repo and add a folder with your github user id just like we, uh, i did for the green roots inside that as a readme dot uh, add one readme dot 
MD file in readme.md file add any content that you would like to do and then raise a pull request to etapa slash fork me what am i going to do i am going to actually uh, uh, see each of this pull request i'll be merging those pull request and i'll be adding you as a contributor to this repository okay let this repository be an open source repository please contribute to this by learning how to fork doesn't it sound interesting all right so that's all about this video i hope that you like and you enjoy doing it wasn't that great? I hope you enjoyed it. So from now, if you didn't uh, know what was forking, I think you know what is forking. So from now, whenever you are actually contributing or planning to contribute any kind of public project, please do forking, you know, start forking. All right. And uh, please do the task that I have given to you so that, you know, I start getting to know, like, you know, you are able to fork that repo and you're able to kind of commit to it. You're able to push, you're able to do the pull request and all those uh, things. The uh, repo details is in the description. And uh, please subscribe to the channel because I keep sharing a lot of stuff. Uh, there is a React series that is kind of running right now, which is getting, oh yeah, I'm getting a lot of great feedback about it. So, you know, if you're interested, please go and watch that. Other than that, I also have other videos from the JavaScript side of it. All right. So I'll be back with a lot many things. Till then, take care of yourself. Thank you.